Hey everyone, what's going on? Hopefully you're having a good day today. Just want to hop on today and actually talk about the new policy update for Merch by Amazon. Since apparently so many people in the groups are freaking out and I want to go over that, how some of the shirts are ranking and should be changed. So let's go over that. I know people are going to start hopping on here. Hopefully you guys can hear me all right, but um, what I'm going to do is just go through, we're in Merch Informer, we're going, going to go through the Merch Hunter. These are just the best selling shirts on Amazon. And you can see we just had St. Patrick's Day. Let's just open up a few of these shirts. For example, this is World Autism Awareness. Okay, so I guess Autism Month is coming up. Hopefully um, you guys are on top of that. That's always been a really good niche for me. But anyway, we need to talk about the actual policy update, which people don't seem to understand. And I think it's really just as simple as thinking about what you are doing. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Hey, Chris. Hey, Farsane. Thanks for joining. So let's just see. The first bullet point here is this cute heart made from pieces of a puzzle and autism awareness words inside is one of the best shirts from all nice autism shirts. Women, autism shirts, men, autism shirts for kids. So it started off well. Okay, I know people are asking the question, can I say that this shirt is good for X, Y, Z, and then just list off a bunch of things. No word for merch yet, but personally, I'm going to say that that is absolutely keyword stuffing. I mean, if you need to be able to actually read the sentence out loud to yourself, and it makes sense. I've been literally telling people that for two years, and I know lots of people don't want to listen because keyword stuffing your listings does work, but now finally, finally, Amazon is doing something about it. So. If you're going to make a listing, now this listing did start off good. This is a nice, nice shirt. I don't know if they copied it. I don't know if it's original. Don't shoot the messenger, but this right here, it starts off good. You know, this, this cute heart is made from a piece of a puzzle. Their, their English is a little off. Um, with the autism word inside, it's one of the best shirts for all. Nice. And then they start keyword spamming. Autism shirts for women. Autism shirts men. Autism shirts kids. This is just a good shirt for autism in general. You do not need to put women, men, and kids. You have men, women, and youth right here. You selected these when you uploaded to Merch by Amazon. So it's really not that hard to figure out that this is just some BS that you don't need to put in there. Okay? Let's keep going. Um, tell it I wear autism ribbon. Oh my gosh. Tell it I wear autism ribbon for my son. All right, number two, if you're going to be putting bullet points, you might want to either get a better grasp of English, run it by someone who does have a better grasp of English. But two, autism went ribbon for my son. I wear puzzle for my son. Does that have anything to do with that design right there? Now, I know there's a lot of I, you know, I have this autism ribbon on my shirt for my son t-shirts that's relevant to that phrase. So while autism is relevant to this shirt right here, these phrases, where are they? Autism ribbon for my son and I wear a puzzle for my son have nothing to do with this design. This is just common sense. Hey, Hams, how are you doing? Hey, Jason. Hey, Melissa. All right. So first bullet point. This I would consider personally, again, this is my opinion. This isn't from Amazon or anything. That needs to be fixed. That is an absolute mess. And that could definitely be whittled down to something that's readable out loud. You've, you've seen me stumble across my words probably five times already, and it's been three minutes. So not, not the greatest start, but let's keep going. Love autism, love shirt, autism awareness, t-shirt gift. If you look for autism shirts, dad autism shirts for mom, this one will let you know that you are aware and one of your family member is with autism. Puzzle ribbon shirt and puzzle ribbon gift for men, uh, women. Does that sound decent when I speak it out loud? Anyone? Hey, Lester, how's it going? Hey, Tran. Sorry if I butchered your name there. But uh, I, don't, I don't know why people do this. I've been telling people not to do this for ages. People have read the terms of service since it first came out, or at least since I was in Merge, and said, hey, guys, no keyword stuffing. 
this right here is keyword stuffing because you made an autism shirt you i would only focus on i would say two to four keywords in sentence form any more than that and you're really just getting off track I don't believe that Amazon is trying to make better humans out of us. The update is because they're sick of returns because the shirt is not gold, neon, glow, metallic. I completely agree. I mean, I think we'll get into that. That's definitely one of the problems, but I don't think that problem bugs me personally as much as this trash does. And this shirt is selling incredibly well, so you know that it's either working or one of these keywords got them some traffic. But I think another part of the problem which is why they released this update, is that people are searching for certain keywords. So let's just say you're searching for a shirt that says autism ribbon for my son. And all of a sudden this shirt comes up in the results. I don't see a single ribbon on that shirt. I think we can all agree that there is no ribbon on that shirt. So then people you know, end up scrolling down the listings and finding something that they actually want. This is clogging up the listings for, for this keyword and, and this keyword might be a little bit re relevant, but it, the saying is not on the shirt. Now, normally, the way a search engine works, if, if you are to search something out and you find a shirt and you know you scroll past it, or maybe you click on it and you click back and you're like, nah, that shirt's not for me. That tells Amazon, that gives them a data point that says, hey guys, this shirt is not relevant to this keyword. And typically they fall down the listings, right? But when you do this kind of stuff and you just spam the hell out of the bullet points with all these different kind of keywords it's always going to rank at the top for just like all the other keywords because it's getting so much traffic especially with these uh irrelevant keywords there so that's the problem that bugs me i hope that amazon's actually going to do something about it the shirt repeats too many times autism i agree i mean there's it's clearly an autism shirt they put they put it in the title so that's good it's in the brand okay now they might want to change their brand to something a little more relevant. 2018 has come and gone. All right, so it's it's in the title, it's in the brand. They don't need to put men, women, and youth like they did, let's see, right here. Okay, they've already selected the size of the shirts. And then their second bullet point is just trash. So if, if you're watching and this is your shirt, you should go fix it. Hamza, this listing looks like it was made someone following SEO from 2007. It really does. It really, really does. Will there be a mass listing takedown in 30 days? Eric, I don't know, but I can, I can probably assume that in 30 days, if people don't actually fix this kind of stuff and, you know, the gold and the foil and the metallic. I even saw a shirt today that was, that I don't know if it was linked in a group or something. The shirt literally said that it glowed in the dark and it pulsated with music. You, you ever been to a, like a concert or something where the shirts pulsate to the music? Merch can clearly not do that with the technology they have. So that kind of stuff, as well as this, are probably going to be hit in 30 days. Fingers crossed. But, you know, they've given us time to fix the listings. And I've seen a lot of complaints in the groups. I think it's one, it's common sense. So it's been in the TOS since the beginning that you shouldn't do this kind of stuff. It's been there for so long and people didn't want to listen. So them giving us 30 days, I personally think is pretty, pretty generous. But anyways, let's keep going. We're just going to go through some of the top shirts here. So Marvel shirt, Marvel, Marvel. Okay, so aut autism uh, day or month or week. I think it's a month. Must be coming up or maybe it's this month. Is rose gold okay? I would not do rose gold, especially since that was one of the words that they mentioned in the TOS update. They specifically mentioned rose gold, not okay. Now, I do agree that it actually is a color. I did a live maybe six months ago talking about that. And I think it's helpful to match colors of things to phones and pop sockets and such. But for now, if you have any of the specific words, that have been listed in the TOS update, I personally will go remove them because if Amazon's saying they don't want something and they're giving you 30 days to remove it, come the 31st day, if you don't remove it, it's probably gonna disappear because all that stuff can be programmed to automatically just sweep the catalog. 
I believe that keyword stuffing hurts your AMS auto campaigns. Oh my God, yes. Yes, they do. Keyword stuffing absolutely hurts your auto campaigns in AMS because what they're gonna do is they're going to scrape your listing and then they're going to pull out the keywords from your listing and then they're just going to blow your entire ad spend on all those keywords. And if they aren't super relevant to the design, or for example, that shirt I had open, this one, if they start running, if this person who has this shirt starts running AMS campaigns to, to this shirt, they're going to pull out probably autism ribbon, okay? Or maybe the full phrase, but most likely autism ribbon. They're gonna start running traffic to this, to this shirt, and every time someone clicks it, they're going to spend money, and then when they get to the shirt, they're gonna go, the customer is going to say, okay, I don't see a ribbon on that shirt, like why did I click this? And I'm gonna click back. So not only does that waste the person's money, but it pisses off the customer. And Amazon is all about the customer. So when you're thinking about this new update, instead of complaining and moaning to the groups, all you need to do is, hey, if a customer comes and was to read this uh, sentence here, is that a good experience for them? Are they going to read that and understand what the design is in your shirt? Are they going to want to purchase your shirt because they read this? In this case, it's absolutely no. The stress look, I believe they said distress, or maybe it was grunge in the update as well, so I would remove that too. I mean, customers who are shopping on Amazon, I'm going to assume that they aren't blind, and uh, they can see that the shirt's distressed. Interesting to see what happens. Rose gold is a color. I had some rejections for neon green, blue, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not real neon. Yeah, so the problem with the neons, um, yeah, they're colors, but when they print them the, with the print-on-demand technology that they have, they end up really flat. I don't know if you've ever ordered one of your own shirts, but if you get something where you put sort of a neon color on it, for example, if you were to put gold or tinfoil gold on a pop socket, whenever it prints, it's going to look yellow. It's going to look like a flat yellow, and that flat yellow is not going to look shiny. It's not going to look metallic. It's actually going to look pretty bad. So if you're going to put gold on a pop socket and what shows up is this flat yellow that doesn't match their shiny new iPhone, one, they're going to be mad. They'll probably leave a bad review. Okay, and then what happens? Amazon gets a return and has to eat that cost because they can't resell the pop socket that just came in that no one wants. So they lost money on printing. They, they made an angry customer, so maybe that customer doesn't come and shop on Amazon anymore. Okay, and if the customer isn't shopping on Amazon, they're gonna lose out on future sales. If you guys just take 10 seconds to think of where merch is coming from, you're gonna realize that they're trying to run a business here and they don't want it to upset their customers. And that's what's happening when people are keyword stuffing. That's what's happening when people are putting gold and foil and, and bright shiny colors. And when, when something comes in the mail and, and it's not what the customer expects, they're going to have to eat that cost. I mean, I know we all, we all don't like the return aspect, but you know, it, it does happen. But Amazon's actually losing money there a lot more than we are. So that's probably why that's happening. So this be kind trend, I probably wouldn't uh, do it, but as you can tell here, it is selling very, very well. Um, let's see, Bumblebee supports being kind to everyone and loving all people. This Bumblebee also happens to be supporting the autism awareness puzzle pieces for families and people who love a child who is autistic. So I don't know if I would put the kind or the be kind or anything like that, but this is a readable sentence, okay? It's readable, it has keywords in there, okay? Bumblebee, related to the design. Autism awareness puzzle pieces, related to the design. Families and people who love a child, child who is autistic, also related to the design. So start, starting off really well here. Second bullet point. Let's see, gift idea for your mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, daughter, sister, brother, kid, significant other, partner, or spouse. Holiday presents are perfect. So they started off really well with their first bullet point here and then just completely lost it in their second. I, you know, if it's, if you're making a specific shirt for a mom or a specific shirt for a grandfather or a specific shirt for a brother, then you can put those keywords in there, I think. But this to me is keyword stuffing and it's just completely unrelated. Someone who's searching for this shirt right here, 
they're going to be looking for autism awareness and puzzle pieces and you know autistic children would would wear this people are not going to be searching for grandfather grandmother daughter sister just every kind of relative there is in the book just stop doing it drives me nuts and it makes me even more crazy when i read in the groups and people are like is is this okay is that a good experience for the customer in your view and if you're honest with yourself you're going to be saying no pull up some lectures please oh we're gonna get there we are gonna get he's he's definitely in the list of uh top sellers here uh can we use vintage or is that the same as distress um i i think it depends with vintage that personal opinion again if i say anything that that gets you in trouble um but you know if vintage is on the shirt as in uh i think i saw a vintage shirt in here let me let's look here it goes down here somewhere yeah so with this shirt right here it says vintage 1969 clearly they can put vintage in the title and the bullet points because it's related to the design that you're putting up now if you're just putting you know vintage uh I don't even know how else would you use vintage i mean i guess it's kind of distressed or old and it's not actually on the design I, then i wouldn't use it because then it's not related to the design your bullet points should be related to the design itself all right retro i might use retro i don't think i'd stray too far away from uh retro vintage and distressed are legit printing styles no i agree if it's related to the design can't like I know you know that, but the reason I'm doing this video is just so many of the people in the Facebook groups are confused, and I just, if you just sit for 10 seconds and you think about it, it's really not that hard to understand. Just don't keyword stuff. Like, let's just look at this design I brought up. Okay, vintage 1969. Celebrate your 50th birthday because you're vintage, original, and a legend. Okay, so there is vintage, original, and a legend, but they put it in a way in the sentence where it actually makes sense. You're not keyword stuffing. It's related to the design. Okay, this 1969 50th birthday shirt makes a great gift for a 50th birthday. Okay, again, great sentence, but then they break down and they list every single month of the year. Why? I don't know why. If someone's looking for a 50th birthday vintage shirt, they're not going to type in 50th birthday vintage shirt, you know, March. They're going to just type in the, the overarching niche. Too many brain cells have been killed the last 24 hours. People need to be on the internet, to be off the internet this weekend. Yes, very, very true. Or they just need to put 10 seconds into realizing that this kind of stuff, one, is hurting the search results okay you have people complaining about that and when you go and put your own shirts up and you do this kind of thing you're really not helping the situation so amazon's finally taking action on that i think we can pretty much all agree uh that's a good thing now don't get me wrong i would like a little more clarification from amazon i think everyone would um i think everyone's going to want more clarification going forward no matter what but hey we play in their sandbox and that's kind of the way things are we just have to think for ourselves sometimes if you have a color on the shirt name, can you use it? Um, what do you mean by color on the shirt name? I wouldn't talk about the actual shirt, because if you say, you know, this this uh, design is printed on an orange shirt, if they or a black shirt, for example, and all of a sudden Amazon says, you know what, guys, I don't want to keep black in stock anymore, well, then you're going to have a problem. But if your design itself is, you know, a uh, yellow bumblebee, I don't think that's any issue at all. Now, again, my opinion this is not uh, from Amazon. This is just, you know, common sense. Um, let's see. Second bullet point. 1969 50th birthday retro color t-shirt. That's a little wordy. I wouldn't consider it spamming, though. Uh, features a retro 60s, 70s color theme. Distressed font and simple, cool design. Make this awesome, funny birthday t-shirt. All right. So this could definitely be reworded a little bit. They did say distressed font, but again, that is the design. The design itself is distressed. I don't really see that as an issue. Perfect 50th birthday gift for uh, wife, husband, mom, dad. This really isn't needed. I know people do it, but you don't need to do it to actually get sales. I promise. 
uh, makes a great Christmas gift also. So I would rework this second bullet point a little bit. It's not terrible. It's definitely not terrible. There's definitely room for improvement. You could use all of these keywords that they put in here. Just make it a little bit more readable. And by readable, if you can say it out loud to yourself without stumbling over your words like I keep doing, then I would say that that is a decent bullet point and you're not going to get hit with that. Amazon's not out to get you. They're just trying to clean up their catalog a little bit and, and make it a better experience for the customer. I wear pink for my mom. That is a perfect example. I think that, uh, you know, I wear pink for my mom, breast cancer. It makes sense. No one's going to hit you for that. And if they do, they're going, if they hit you for something like I wear pink for my mom, now if that's not trademarked and it's just like an auto takedown, you can respond to them and, and tell them in a polite manner why you think they're wrong and they will see that and more than likely your shirt's going to go back up and it's not a ding on your account. So you'll be fine. I do hope they follow through and clamp down on keyword stuffing this time around. I do too. Weren't they supposed to, Ken, weren't they supposed to do that like, I don't know, six months ago? I mean, it's been in the TOS forever. But I think with now that they've actually mentioned specifically some words they don't want and the keyword stuffing and examples, I think we're going to see, uh, I definitely think we're going to see some action coming up. But anyways, let's keep going down the list here. Now, one of the things Burnt Reformer just released, if you guys uh, see this graph and I'm scrolling around, this is going to show you the price here and the BSR of shirts that um, we have data for actually on, on the page. So if you guys see this graph and find it useful, um, it's uh, an extension called Merchlytics that we just released. So I had that open, thought I'd make a note of it. All right, let's keep going down. Straight out of my 30s, sloth. I saw someone wanted me to open a, a lick t-shirt. Let's open this one. All right, so Amazon's choice for St. Patrick's Day shirt boys. Okay, this is a lick shirt. I think you're all familiar with him. We'll run a trademark check. It looks like he doesn't have any sayings in here that are trademarked, which is good. $19.99, uh, decent price because it's selling so well. We'll come down here. We'll notice that, you know, BSR went really, really far down and then started to shoot up and they did raise their price a bit. They started out way lower, as you can see here, bottom of the barrel as BSR is coming down, which means sales are going up. They raised their price up a few times and ended up making a lot more money. So just keep that strategy in mind. It's still selling fairly decently, but let's turn off the trademark check and read their bullet points. A year ago for the... The keyword stuffing. Okay. Merch content updates are like Trump tweets. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Bullet points. Lick t-shirt. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this probably knows uh, who this guy is. He's a very prominent mercher and does very, very, very well. So let's read his bullet points and you guys tell me what you think. All right, so it's a dabbing leprechaun. Very, very nice illustration. Probably 10 times better than the majority of uh, people watching this. So you should up your, up your game a little bit. But his first bullet point says, St. Patrick's Day shirt dabbing leprechaun, boys, kids, Irish men, girls, women. Trendy dab dance t-shirt, top hat costume party on St. Patrick's Day festival. Lucky charm clovers, funny humor, St. Pat Patty's t-shirt for friends and family prone to shenanigans and malarkey. Now, does anyone here actually think, uh, clearly this shirt is selling well, but does anyone think that this t-shirt bullet point is a good customer experience? Anyone at all? I mean, clearly that makes absolutely no sense. All they did was they took a bunch of keywords that are getting traffic. Now, that's what I tell people to do over and over again. Use keywords that are getting traffic but the big point here is you need to put them in a readable sentence and personally only focus on, you know, two to four keywords. There's no reason to do this. None. Just none. And this is, a this is absolutely keyword stuffing. So Lick, if you're watching this, man, you gotta, there's a lot of um, shirts you're gonna have to go update. This is definitely something you don't wanna be doing. This. If Amazon actually does what they say they're going to do, 
this is going to take a hit. Hamza says, people need to understand they can fool the search algorithm a few times. Uh, parasite parasitizing on random high traffic keywords but they won't convert for those keywords and the whole listing is considered a waste of traffic that is the problem so if someone searches for malarkey okay and this shirt comes up and they don't buy it and they click back again that's a data point to Amazon it says hey we displayed this shirt for this keyword a customer came clicked on the shirt for that keyword remember they're tracking all of that and all of a sudden, they spent half a second on the page and went back. So what that tells Amazon is, hey, this shirt is really bad for that keyword, and just starts dropping your listing down the page. Not only does it drop your listing down the page for that keyword, it hurts the entire listing for every other keyword. So just don't, don't do that. All right, second, second bullet point. I really don't have any faith that this is going to be better, but... um. St. Patrick's Day novelty graphic t-shirts, outfit for kids, teen, boys, girls, youth, men, women, mom, dad, mother, father, son, daughter, sister, brother, girlfriend, boyfriend, who love Ireland, Irish culture, shamrock leaf, makes a great gifts t-shirt. Oh my god. That is, that's pretty bad. Alright, the, the men, the men, women, and youth thing won again. You selected that when you uploaded the t-shirt. Two, this is just keyword stuffing. Daughter, sister, brother, girlfriend, boyfriend. If you if you have any common sense in your head, you know that that is keyword stuffing and that that is not a good customer experience. Let's see. Big seller will be busy changing thousands or lose account. Um, yeah, they're they have a lot of work to do. I'm I'm not going to argue that fact. But again, they have a lot of work to do. They're an asset to the merch platform, though, because I'm I'm guessing Lick makes a ton of money for Amazon. But again, we all have 30 days. It really shouldn't be that big of a deal. Is Merchlytics an extension or part of Merch Informer? So it's both. It's part of Merch Informer, but it is an extension. You install it. You can see it's up here in the right-hand corner, and then it's going to show uh, the, the the graphs and the price graphs over time, which is really helpful in actually determining like, hey, look at exact like this shirt right here. You can see that BSR is going down. He's making more sales. He's making sales and making nothing. The price over here was you know, bottom of the barrel. As soon as he started making more sales and the shirt's taken off, look at this. He starts raising his price, raising his price, raising his price. Finally, he's up here at $19.99, and his BSR is still going down as he's at $19.99. So he's making a lot more money. He used T-shirt, T shirt just in maybe different senses yeah i don't as long as it makes sense now if you just use you know t-shirt t-shirt hoodie blah 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 comma 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 no good but if you're talking if you're saying you know this t-shirt t is a great blah blah um make sure to grab this shirt today like that's readable it's that shouldn't be an issue at all and i i like to i like to change it up when i'm doing my bullet points too as long as you know, it's relevant to the design. If it's a t-shirt that I'm doing, I might put in variations of t-shirt, t-shirt, you know, so on and so forth. But even though this is Amazon's choice and uh, he's doing fairly well, I definitely, definitely, if I was him, I were to go back and look at this stuff. Malarkey, is this an actual uh, trademark? Let's see, trademark. See raincoats. I don't see t-shirts in there. Okay. Well, exit out of that. I'll keep going down our little little list here. Here's another here's another autism one. Let's open this one and take a look at it. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. Again, I probably wouldn't do be kind. I would stay away from that. Can I use rose gold in my listing? Can you should know better than that. That is a specific. Rose gold, gold foil, blah, blah, blah. Those are specifically listed in the new update. So I don't understand why people in the Facebook groups are asking if they can do XYZ while XYZ is listed in the update that says you cannot do this. If you're not willing to put forth 10 seconds to read, for, read uh, I think it's 3.3 in the, the service, in terms of service, then I just shut your merge account down. 
If you're not willing to put 10 seconds to read their updates, like th that's a problem. Can you put your brand name in the description? Uh, if it's relevant to your brand, I don't really see that being an issue. Is this video available later in YouTube? Yeah, um, I am recording it. I'll probably upload it in a day or two, but it should be uh, on Facebook as well. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, we'll trademark trade this one quick. In a world where you can be, where you can be anything, be kind. Again, the be kind thing, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Uh, Mother's Day. Really, when I, when I hit this uh, Merchant Form of Trademark Check again, that's an extension, I'm really looking for a phrase, like a specific phrase in the bullet points that may be uh, trademarked, because I, I want to stay away from that, but it doesn't look like it, so let's go back. In a world where you can be anything, be kind, autism elephant shirt, autism elephant t-shirt, autism sunflower tea, autism elephant sunflower shirt, autism awareness t-shirt, autism supporters tea, autism fighter shirt, autism warrior shirt. So this goes back to what we were talking about with just putting shirt a million times. You can put t-shirt or shirt in your listing, but one, they put t-shirt or shirt. Here's T. They were trying to get every single variation. Here's T. Here's shirt. Here's t-shirt. Um, did I get, gather all of them? Yeah, they, they repeated them twice. And then what they did is they just, you know, stuffed the hell out of this listing with with these keywords that they think are going to be relevant. In a world where you can be anything, be kind, autism elephant shirt. So autism elephant shirt, autism elephant t-shirt. Again, same thing. Autism sunflower tea. All right, no one's going to search for autism sunflower. Okay. Um, autism awareness, autism supporters. So really, if you're going to rewrite this sentence, all you have to do, you know, in a world where you can be anything, be kind, you know, this uplifting autism elephant t-shirt you know is a great gift for autism supporters period there i fixed the sentence it's readable there's not a problem and it, it's just not a bad experience for the customer unlike tripping over the sentence a million times if merch got rid of bullet points do you think the 60 characters in the title are enough to tell the al algorithm what your shirt is um yes i think it's enough to tell the algorithm what your shirt is um, I think the title is the most important, but two, I think the bullet points are also important because they add to that customer experience. So the title should be the thing that you focus the most on. I mean, that is the title of your shirt. That's what's going to show up on mobile. That's going to be sh showing up on desktop. So you want your main keyword in your title where it makes sense. But the bullet points are there. One, to give your customer a good experience. Maybe they don't fully understand the design. Maybe you just want to tell them a little bit more about the design. You can add keywords in there. But two, the thing I never see people doing is like your bullet points are a place where you can actually sell the design. You can actually tell them why they should buy this particular design. And that's going to be relevant to the t-shirt. Let's see, lately merch former trademark checker gets stuck while processing. If you have uh, the trademark checker getting stuck in processing, put in a help ticket with like a screenshot. It could be possible that that's when we're updating the database for um, all the trademarks that show up. Let's see. Please rip mine so I can get a clue. All right, Brett, I'm going to do that. Okay. Since you asked, don't get mad at me. Dark rose, oh god, rose gold. <laughs> all right, dark rose gold, heart Valentine's pattern, phone. Okay, and then they added all that on. Uh, I would definitely remove rose gold. That's not going to print nearly as well as you think it will. That's going to print pretty flat, I guarantee it. And it's not going to match the rose gold iPhones, which is probably why so many people buy these things. So remove that. All right, so dark heart Valentine's pattern. I think that's fine. Uh, let's see, eleven ninety nine. The the pr okay. This pretty love heart design pop socket grip is perfect for your electronic device. Makes a great stocking stuff. Or wait a minute. Yeah, makes a great stocking stuff for kids, for kids, boys or girls. Also best for Mother's Day. That's that's pretty decent. You really didn't go overboard. I don't really think that's bad at all. I might uh, say makes a great stocking stuffer for. Um, for kids, okay, kids kind of includes boys and girls. I don't really think that's uh, 
you could probably remove this makes a great stuff makes a great stocking stuffer for kids and is also great for mother's day i mean they, you don't really need to go back in and change that this really isn't a bad sentence at all so that's pretty good let's see dark rose gold again <laughs> remove rose gold so you don't get hit in 30 days so dark dark heart valentine's pattern phone grip he's a used great help Phone accessory grip, tilt stand. Did you add this bullet point? Phone accessory grip, tilt stand for easy phone use. Great holiday gift for Valentine's Day, birthday, or Christmas. So I would probably remove the Valentine's Day, birthday, and Christmas. Um, I would probably remove the phone grip, blah, 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 because that's going to be up here in the title. So... Yeah, your second bullet point, I would just remove the holidays. I mean, you want to describe whatever kind of design this is. I don't know if... I, I too, have a problem describing, like, the fractal designs and however you describe these patterns. But you really don't need to put in, you know... Valentine's Day is definitely related. Uh, birthdays and Christmas, not so much. Not so much. Can you still write perfect for... Um, if your design is safe for woodworkers and you say this design is perfect for the woodworker in your family I, Nothing wrong with that. I think the problem comes in where people are saying, you know This is perfect for and they just start, you know Comma 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 just listing off 10 million people that this product is supposedly perfect for and that's keyword stuffing Well, let's see girls trip is it safe to use for girls trip uh is it safe to use for youth or t-shirt i'm not really sure what you're asking if you're doing a shirt about a girl's trip i don't see that being an issue is it hard to write for humans and algorithms and at the same time have a good seo to rank favorably no right oh say okay so clearly the algorithms are going to be what moves us to the front page right but without the human aspect you're never going to get there because customers are never going to land on your product so write for humans first, even though that's a little counterintuitive. And as long as people land on your page because they found you and it's a good customer experience and they check out and they buy, that is going to tell the algorithm to rank you higher and you're going to make more sales because you made people happy, because you gave the customer a good experience. You don't need to add men, women, youth, and bullet points. No, there's, there's, there's no reason to add men, women, and youth, and bullet points because you select that as a fit type. You know, Amazon, almost a trillion dollar company now, I think they're smart enough to know that when you select men, the shirt is for men. If you select men and women, it's for both. So, not needed at all. Bullet pointing is a language that all new mergers think they need to learn to succeed. It's just English. It really is just English. And if you're not, you know, fluent in English, which I know a ton of people aren't, either learn or get a plug-in like Grammarly or I, there's a million other solutions on the market that will actually help you bring sentence together that are understandable by fluent English speakers. That's so important for the customer experience, especially since we're mainly selling on Amazon.com. Okay, let's close these out. We'll go back. We'll do a few more and then I'll probably hop off. And if you guys have any questions, just drop them on watching the chat as well brother shark okay marvel kiss i wonder if this is a real no it's not so we keep we keep some of the shirts that get removed in the merch hunter just so people can see like hey this you know this shirt's selling really well and they open it up and it's not found well it's not found because this is this is a kiss shirt not from the kiss brand so something to keep in mind marvel jeff dunham because I'm a lady. Okay, let's see. Because I'm a lady. I'm not really sure what this is from. That might date me a little bit. Although, I did grow up in the 90s. Let's see here. Show off to your friends and family in this black Afro 90s urban apparel t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> for a loose fit, order size up. Man, they, this person's probably been emerged for a long time and they didn't get the memo. You, uh, you can't do that anymore. You used to be able to. I'm still a little bit upset about it, but uh, no talking about the fit of the t-shirt. Again, they want your bullet points to be related just to the design. That's it. Let's see. This tea may shrink 
a little after the first wash. Again, do not talk about that. What if they change the material completely? What if they bring in a new manufacturer? I mean, it's already happened once. It may happen again. So this, this kind of stuff completely take out of your listings. Not needed. Will get you in trouble. This damn Gina cause I'm a lady sit. Okay, so it's from a sitcom. Not sure which one. Again, might date me a little bit, but whoever put this up should probably take it down if it's based on a sitcom and they don't have the rights to it. So TV shows, t-shirt is available for money. Here we go again. Men, women, and youth. They selected it right here. So they're just wasting space. This is a defining part in hip hop culture. Grab one of these unique items today. So other than them probably infringing on a sitcom TV show and talking about men, women, and youth and looser fit, the rest is pretty decent. But this kind of stuff is what you want to be updating. I'm seeing a lot of bestsellers while researching using the autocomplete phrase, another autocomplete phrase, yet another autocomplete phrase, comma style or keyword stuffing. Uh, giving merch back in keywords, definitely cut down on customers, seeing bullet points, keyword stuffing, or that look unnatural is red. Yeah, I actually, I like the bullet points because it gives me a chance to actually sell the customer on, you know, once I get them to my page or, you know, product page on Amazon, I don't technically own it, but once they're on the product page of the design that you put up, you need to keep them there. So one, the design has to be good. The title has to be relevant, but I really think the bullet points are important for selling the customer right then and there, why they need to not click back, why they should buy this design and why it's so great. Now, Backend keywords, those are good too, but those you have zero chance to communicate with the customer. Your bullet points, you can communicate to the customer. And what to be honest, we're all in sales. That's that's all that's all we do. We're all just selling. You might not feel like a salesperson because you're sitting in front of the computer and Amazon's taking care of most of it, but we're all in sales. I think that's really important to remember, especially when you're when you're writing these. Because some of the, some of the examples we went over, if you started, you know talking to someone in person imagine you're talking to another person you know right in front of you and you're trying to make the sale you would not say half of the stuff we've seen today you probably wouldn't even say 90 percent of it because the person would look at you like you're an idiot so in title which is better between funny fishing t-shirt for men or funny fishing t-shirts for fishermen those are both i'm going to be honest those are both terrible titles okay the title should be relevant to the design if you're going to say that it's a funny fishing T-shirt, put that in your bullet points, but make your title about the design itself. Are the keywords okay in this one? Oh my, God. <laughs> I see what you, uh, look at this beautiful T-shirt over here. Let's see, this not today Nimitz design is great for those who are actually willing to put their head down and get things done instead of complaining about things outside of their control. Let's grab one today, look at that. Someone is selling the customer on why they should buy this amazing design. Um, let's see that looks like the only they only put one bullet point in here So I would say that that is that's a very solid bullet point Ken. I think that's very decent All right Let's go back here. I once made an experiment. I uploaded a good design shirt from only brand name and short title Once start selling ended ranking for keywords that I didn't even have in my listing Yeah, so if people are are searching for keywords that are relevant to the keywords you have in your in your bullet points in your title then you're going to start showing up for those and if you start showing up for something that's relevant even if you didn't put it in your in your in your bullets and all of a sudden someone clicks on it and buys it again that's a data point for amazon amazon is going to say okay so we showed you for this keyword that's relevant to the keywords you actually have in your listing we showed it to a customer the customer saw it liked it and bought it okay, this is actually a relevant listing to this keyword and they start ranking you higher and higher. And as soon as you start ranking for those keywords and people are coming to your listing from these keywords that are relevant, not necessarily in your listing, you actually start ranking for the keywords that are in your listing. I mean, that's the whole thing I've been trying to do with these lives is you don't need to go in to the top sellers like I did here and just copy people. You can find what niches are big, even if they're huge niches and they're really hard to get into, you can use really small keywords to start getting that initial ranking. And once you get that initial ranking, you start moving up all over the place because it's relevant to the customer. Okay, you use the right keywords that are relevant to the niche 
And when you get the sales, the sales are what actually move you up the search results. You know, you might be on the fifth page and they display, they display your product for a relevant keyword. Again, not necessarily one that's in your listing. And then you get a sale for that relevant keyword and that tells Amazon, okay, this is related. Maybe from the fifth page, now you're moving up to the third page, okay? Now you get two or three more sales. Well, what's Amazon gonna do? They're gonna say, okay, uh, this shirt is very relevant. People are liking it. We're not getting any returns on this product. Let's move them up to the second page. And all of a sudden you're on the first page, you know, three weeks later, and maybe you're, you've moved up from the 15th page to the fifth page for the big keywords and the big niche. That's how you get those initial rankings. So that's super, super important. But again, that when you, the whole reason I did this live today is because people are just moaning about the new update. When you spam your bullet points, you hurt your listing across all of Amazon. That's it. You, it's, it's not good for Amazon. They're going to lose money off returns. It's not good for your customer. It's not good for you because you're probably going to get returns too, which is a double whammy. Hurts you, hurts Amazon, and it makes them mad. You don't want to make your customers mad. Keep the bullet points for sure. Just adding back into Merch like Seller Central, KDP, I think would help cut down on bad user experience while reading the listing. People will be more concerned with writing a good sales copy in the bullet points and description. That just keep keywords stuff in bullet strength. Well, I agree with that, but I think, I think the update we're going to see in 30 days is really where we should make the judgment. I want to see what Amazon actually does, and we'll see if that's in line with what I'm thinking they're going to do. Let's find a few more, and then I'll hop off here. We got a KISS shirt here. Again, KISS-ROAD-TOUR. This is probably removed. If not, yeah, it's removed. Okay, let's see. We got some gaming heartbeats, pitter-patter. Again, Willie Nelson. This is probably not going to fly as well. Again, Amazon removed it. There's really no reason to fly in the gray area. If That's why we keep these shirts in here, so that people can see, hey, Maybe, maybe you're from another country you've never heard of Willie Nelson before. Probably shouldn't put him on a t-shirt if you don't have the rights to use it. How do you find out which keywords they're ranking for? So you can, you can actually just search on Amazon for the keywords in their listings. Um, you can use the product search and merchant former, which is going to show you the most used keywords for the best sellers. That's the way I do it. Um, basically, you want to just open a listing. So let's just find a listing here. Let's, let's pick this listing. Um, basically, what you want to do is you want to come in here. Actually, let's not pick this listing. We'll come back to that. Let's pick this one. Uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to come in here and you want to actually look at their sentence as a whole and then just pick it apart. So, sloth hiking team, we will get there when we get there. T-shirt. This vintage sloth t-shirt is a great gift idea for people who love receiving sloth gifts. Okay, this person needs a period. Like dabbing sloth t-shirts, sloth stuffed animals, sloth plush, sloth onesie, sloth case, sloth sticker. Uh, whoever did this is an absolute idiot. This is not a case, this is not a sticker, and this is certainly not a onesie. But what you'd want to do is, is come in here and, and say, okay, what are the main keywords that actually relate to this shirt? Okay, we will get there when we get there. Not a main keyword. The main keywords are going to be sloth, sloth hiking, sloth hiking team, uh, what else we got in here? It's not a vintage sloth. This is a terrible listing. This is this is this kind of stuff that's probably gonna get hit. So okay, we have sloth hiking team, that's one keyword. And they just spammed it everywhere. So that's literally the only keyword that we can pull out of this listing. And then uh, you could go and search for Amazon. I'd probably go over here to the product search and type in sloth and see the best or actually the most used keywords in the top sellers. And then I would cherry pick from those keywords and put them into a sentence that actually makes sense. That is how I do my listings. But let's see, Father's Day, don't be a sucker, cock, funny t-shirt, funny design. The one thing I would not do on this, one, they probably switch these words around because they want to get around Amazon's uh, policy. Wouldn't do that. Two, definitely wouldn't put this in the youth t-shirt. All right, your father probably isn't wearing uh, youth t-shirts. You know, he might be, but it's not going to fly on Amazon. And these bullet points. Now, short bullet points do work. They definitely work if you keep them short, you keep them sweet, and you keep them relevant. 
but these are just these really are not that great I would expand a little bit around these and fix the listing take out youth and actually make the shirt relevant thoughts on people literally lifting your bullet points keywords word for word sorry if this was already asked or not applicable uh, I put zero thought into that because if let's just say you have a shirt okay you put it you put it up online it's selling five copies a day now let's say someone comes along and just copy and paste your bullet points what people do not understand is Amazon is a search engine so if your shirts been online and it's selling and this and someone copies your bullet points Amazon is going to realize that that's duplicate content and the duplicate content is not going to rank above you so I to be honest I don't actually report people for that I don't even look for it because I don't care if my shirts above and I'm making more sales like that's all I care about is making the sales not just playing whack-a-mole so I don't personally do that I don't really hate on people who do but again the bullet points themselves are you know they're not trademarked yeah it's a really crappy thing to do uh, do not do it if you are a merch seller it's not gonna help you make more sales um, I, I don't really think there's that much you can do about it. you could report it yeah it's probably hit or miss if they remove it but personally I don't even pay attention to it for that reason all right what else do we have we're still in the top hundred shirts on shirts on Amazon here I'm three okay that was apparently taken down relax bro very simple design very very simple relax pro lacrosse t-shirt funny lax team lacrosse t-shirt okay this cool lacrosse t-shirt is a great gift for lacrosse players and lacrosse supporters okay perfect perfect sentence it's relevant it's relatable this funny lax design with two lacrosse sticks fe features the saying relax bro okay again that's exactly what the design is um, if you love American lax lacrosse the T is for you Grab your lax sticks, gloves, balls, and play. Um, aside from this part doubling up right here, I think that's a perfectly fine sentence. It's related to the shirt. It's describing the design. No issue at all. Not keyword stuffed. Gets the keywords in there. They might have gone a little overboard with putting, you know, LAX in here, but it makes sense. Can you please save the video because I missed it from the start? Yes, I, uh, it should be available in the big merch group as soon as I actually stop it. But I'm going to upload it to YouTube as well. Wouldn't report it either. Thank you for your take and love the live research. Thank you. If you guys actually have like any ideas of what else I should do in these lives, I, uh, a lot of the time I feel like I'm I'm saying the same thing over and over again. Maybe you guys find it interesting, but I don't know. Um, let me know in the comments so that I can actually make those videos. All right, second bullet point. So their their first one's really good. This is relatable. Okay, he's priced high. Um, as you can see very very consistent seller. He's never actually changed the price on this in the few months We have it um, But very consistent seller and his bullet points are or at least the first one we've gone over are perfect All right a great girl lacrosse t-shirt. I wouldn't put girl in here You've already selected women a great girl lacrosse t-shirt men's lacrosse t-shirt and cool lacrosse shirt from puck Why he started off so well or she? Uh, mom, dad, kid, lax girls, lax boys, lax juniors, lax college to pro level players. Awesome for all lacrosse players and fans. So if you just took this second bullet point here and removed all of this, if you just said a great, um, actually, if you just removed that whole sentence, that whole keyword stuff sentence, you know, you'd be perfect. Awesome for all lacrosse players and fans. There you go. Relax, bros. <laughs> relax, bro. Your videos are good. Thanks, Danny. Uh, what does call the vector relax, bro t-shirt? I, I don't really know what you mean. Sorry. Okay. So, man, so many people get so close to having like a good listing and then they, they just go, you know, well, what if a mom wants this or a dad or 10,000 other family members? I might as well include that. But it's really just a waste of time. It's just, it's not going to help you. You think it's going to help you, but that is not going to help. Okay, what else do we have? What is this? 
Happy St. Patrick's Day. I mean, look, look at how well this shirt is doing. You got 16, 24 of you, so this has probably been up a year or two. And it's such a simple design. You know, you, you don't have to have an intricate design for it to be a good design. I think that's something a lot of merchers confuse. You just have to have a good design that people actually want to buy. Name of the element in the Relax Pro shirt. I don't know the name of the element. It's a design, and you should not take other people's elements. Make your own stuff. Um, is Ricardo meme a clean trademark niche? I don't know. You should look it up on tests. Textures are the words distressed and grunge. Okay, you think. Uh, if they relate to the actual design itself, I, I think that's probably okay. If they don't, uh, I wouldn't put it in there. You think that the keyword stuffing includes the title and brand name? Um, I don't know. I, I can admit that I have no idea. If you have absolutely stuffed the hell out of your brand name and title, uh, that is not a good customer experience. So even if they don't crack down on that, I mean, we do have 30 days, just go back and fix them. There's really no reason not to. You have time. You know that what's a good customer experience and what's not, because we've all probably shopped on Amazon or shopped somewhere online. So you, you have to think of the customer. In Pinterest, search your niche and post. There's a lot of great ideas and layouts. Yeah, post. Dude, Pinterest is a gold mine for basically anything you can think of. Um, it doesn't really matter what the ideas are on. You know, they could be on shower caps, and they would still make a great T-shirt. So there's just a lot of a lot of ideas out there. As you can see, this person right here made their bullet points really, really short. Happy Saint. Happy Saint Saint. Okay, so this probably isn't a normal English speaker. Happy Saint Saint Patrick's Day. T-shirt, tea green. T-shirt, t-shirt, t-shirt. Oh my God, I don't. I don't really understand why people do this. Um, but it's terrible. I'm just gonna be honest. You, waste of space now you can use t and t-shirt whatever variations you want but it has to make sense if you're sitting here talking to yourself um or example if you're talking to someone in real life trying to read off these bullet points then they're gonna look at you like uh did you finish school did you try and this person did not try so they should uh fix that t's for men women teen boys girls kids men women youth you you selected it right here so they basically wasted both of their bullet point spaces. Um, I'm considering changing all my brand names to my new single brand name. Do you think this is the best now, changing all brand names? Um, I have all my brands um, that are relevant to the niches I'm in because I don't want to make, you know, as an example, I don't want the dabbing unicorns to show up in the hardcore bikers niche. So I differentiate them uh, for that reason. I don't think there's a problem with switching all to one brand name. I don't think there's an issue with that at all. Now, what do you think if we use same sentences and title, brand, and bullet points? Does it make any sense to be ranked? Why would you use a sentence in your uh, in your brand and your title? That should be describing the shirt, not um, not describing or not selling the customer. I mean, you want the title to be relevant to the shirt. I wouldn't put a sentence up there. Let's see, because some videos say use all variables, so they do. <laughs> that is true. There's, okay. Again, this comes down to common sense. Amazon has a market cap of almost $1 trillion. You don't think that they can differentiate between T-shirt and T-E-E -E shirt? Okay, they have some of the smartest engineers in the world. I'm pretty sure they can figure that out. I mean, if, you, if, if anyone is doing this and you take 10 seconds to think about what you're doing, you come to the conclusion this is a terrible idea. There's really just no reason to do it. Um, so that's, okay, the funny thing is we've been to like at least you know the top 50 shirts and we haven't even found one. We haven't found a single one that's just a normal listing. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Some of them started off pretty well. Uh, God, Guns, and Trump shirt, Second Amendment t-shirt, Trump 45. Yeah, little bit stuffed, okay, just a little bit. You probably won't get hit for that, just saying, but... Bullet point one, God, Guns, and Trump shirt for <laughs> men and women. You selected men and women right here. Who support Second Amendment and Donald Trump. 
Uh, great Trump 45 shirt for everyone. So if you just said, you know, this God, guns, and Trump shirt is perfect for those who support the Second Amendment and Donald Trump. This great teach, this great Trump 45 shirt is, is you know, makes a great gift for everyone. I, I'm just coming off the top of my head, but you see how that's readable and it's understandable? And you remove the men and women part? Just, now, I didn't trademark check anything. I don't know if, uh, Trump 45, 45. It doesn't look like they're trademarked together, but unique. Okay, so the second bullet point, unique gods and, God, guns, and Trump shirt for any gift-giving occasion. For sizing, refer to the size chart on the left. Uh, probably wouldn't do that. Um, I personally wish we could, but they already do have a size chart over here. He probably won't get hit for this, but again, you just want to be, in the bullet points, you want to be talking about the shirt, not anything else. Click on our brand name for more color options. Okay. Oh, they did put it in a different color here. Interesting. So, I mean, this one could use a little bit of work. Um, some of this doesn't read very easily, but this one isn't too bad. You know, they price it $16.95. They're probably pricing it towards the market. Okay. The market determines the price, not you. Very important. And uh, they have a bunch of reviews, so they're doing well. Uh, where can I get best resource for keywords? Um, I would definitely recommend reading the Merchant Former blog. I've written about that so many times. And go from there. So, Neil, that might mean in 30 days, hundreds of thousands of designs will be gone. <laughs> Based on these top ones as an example. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think the first thing they're going to do is they're probably going to sweep all of the keywords for rose gold, gold, uh, glitter, glow in the dark, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be gone immediately because that's easy to program. I'm not sure how they're going to do the keyword stuffing. That, that's going to be really interesting. But I think it's super important that people actually fix their listings so that long term, every time they make a change, you don't have to go and edit 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 shirts. You just, you just sit back, you relax, you watch the Facebook groups, and you laugh about it because it's, it's much less stressful. Uh, what about a title saying, niche t-shirt, name of the shirt, gift tee? Uh, probably wouldn't do it. I don't really see that big of a benefit doing something like that. If you want to put gift or tee or you know anything like that, I would probably just put it in the bullet points. I'd probably just say you know the name of the shirt maybe the niche and t-shirt as long as it makes sense as long as you can say it out loud and you're like okay i understand what you're talking about all right let's see but some as in gold color will be lost yeah that that again is going to be really interesting um to see if they remove things like gold not you know not something maybe that's not trying to trick the customer into like shiny gold metallic now i agree that there are a lot of you know, I even have some up that say, you know, gold or silver because that's the color code. But I, I completely understand where Amazon's coming from and I'll probably take those down or change them. But it really comes down to when the customer orders it, what do they think they're going to get? And if they get something different, that's bad news for you, it's bad news for Amazon, and that's what they're trying to change. If you have a design that displays a gold looking color, what do you call it other than gold? uh that is a very good question i don't know right now a lot of the gold stuff i don't know if you've ever ordered it it prints kind of yellow just because of the technology that they're using sometimes it'll print pretty decently but a lot of times the the metallic not the metallic colors that you know are gonna print not metallic they end up very flat looking so if you want to keep your gold stuff up that's selling I would just order one and see what it looks like and then go from there. Or, um, you know, just, just wait till we have maybe a little bit more clarification from Amazon. Wonder if they set up phrases that will pass. Steve, I completely doubt they've done that. Um, in fact, I, I, I don't even know if, if they have uh, written the code for the purge yet. So we'll, we'll see. It's definitely going to be interesting. Just change gold to yellow. Yeah, so... For the gold stuff, within the next 30 days, unless we get clarification, 
just change it, and then you can always change it again later. I know it's a pain in the ass, so you don't want to do it, but that could definitely save you from getting some takedowns and even a bigger headache down the line. This is the only time I can say I'm glad to be only tier 100. Yeah, it definitely gets harder the more shirts you have up um, as Amazon changes. But the good news is if you're doing it right and you're doing it based on what they say you can do, okay, so just describing the shirt, not the t-shirt behind it, but the design that you're putting on the shirt, you should be good. Now, long time ago, I was the one who put all the, you know, order size up for loose or fit thing because Amazon said I could and they went back and changed it. But again, even though that was a huge pain and I'm still a little bit salty about it, I understand why they did it, right? Because they, they're changing manufacturers, it fits different people different ways, and it's not about the actual shirt. So as long as your bullet points stay consistent, you do it right from the beginning, and you're tier 100 right now, like you, you should be just fine in the future if things change as you start to tear up and add more shirts. If you have cute sloth and a shirt scatter of your listings, hoping that Amazon will show your listing to someone looking for long tail keywords, cute sloth shirt. Um, if you're putting cute sloth or cute and sloth in a cute sloth shirt, if the design is actually cute and related to sloths, that shouldn't be an issue at all. But cute and sloth, I would not consider anywhere near a long tail keyword. So. I would definitely do a little bit more keyword research to find actual phrases or keywords rather than, than the main overarching niche that are actually being searched for. It would be pretty awesome if Amazon printed metallic designs. I doubt that's gonna happen though. They already have their hands full with the, the flood of designs we all like to put up. Let's see, I bet this is, yep, taken down. All right, someone in the comments, tell me, what is this from? I, I, it's got to be from something. What is this design from? Unspeakable. Now, unless they have the rights to use whatever this is from, I don't actually know. This is probably going to be uh, taken down. Unspeakable t-shirt, Saint, Saint April Fools. That's a new one to me, guys. A t-shirt, cute, unspeakable shirt, April Fool's Day t-shirt. So, again, terrible bullet points, not helpful for the customer, and probably infringing. I'm not, I'm not going to say 100%, but, you know, for most people coming in that don't understand this, no one would buy this if they didn't know what it was. And seeing how it's selling so well, I feel like there's some infringement going on here. Uh, is it safe to use parody song lines like my battery is low and it's getting dark? Um, though it has no trademark according to USPTO. Uh, well, then you have to ask yourself if there's no trademark, did you write that song? Did you get permission from the person who did write that song? And if the answer is no, then you should not be using lyrics that you didn't create. Because, again, you have to think about the customer. The only reason someone would buy a song lyric shirt is because of the IP of someone else. That's it. There's no other reason someone buy lyrics um, unless there's intellectual property that someone else owns that's worth something. That, that's the only reason someone would buy something like that. So just stay away from it. There's, there's no reason to be that great. And you know, I see so many people skirting the line every day. And guess what? Those are the people who end up getting banned and saying, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, you did. And, you know, you just think about things for a second. I'm changing rose gold to dark pink or light pink because that is really all the color is. Amazon just doesn't want the returns. Exactly. You know, dark pink, light pink, just pink in general. Okay. And, and still, you know, a lot of people are buying those rose gold pop sockets to match up with their rose gold iPhone. And... If you have pink terms, if the design is pink, they're still going to find it. I don't really think that's going to be, that's not going to hurt you at all. Will you make a merchant form extension that shows BSR and date? Uh, we just did that. So if you, you know, come in here, here, let me scroll up here. I'll show you the one that we were looking at. Uh, this one, for example, we looked at this one earlier. 
it's not going to show on the main page, but it's going to show you on the page itself, the BSR and the sales rank over the last couple of months. So really helpful. It's called Merchlytics. If you guys want to go install it, it's going to show you the graphs on the actual page, which is very, very helpful for seeing how people are changing their pricing strategy and how that affects sales, which is the whole point. Okay. Let's go back and find that shirt. There it is. I still don't know what this is from. Does anyone know what this shirt is from? Unspeakable Steve is a Minecraft YouTube channel. Well, there we go. Okay. So probably definitely infringement. This is going to come down at some point. If, if he doesn't uh, have the license for it. Now, if there's big YouTube channels out there and you guys are feeling ambitious, why don't you go license these people and then you can put them up on merch all day long. Will Amazon remove listings and consider it as takedowns? Um, Amazon's definitely going to remove some listings in 30 days if people don't change things, but I don't know how they're going to be considered. Seeing that they're giving you a whole month to fix things, if there's mistakes, um, I don't think it's going to be a great thing. I mean, Roblox game people. Great, it will download things. It's a YouTube, YouTube channel. Okay, so, yep, definitely infringement here. So that brings up another good point. So many people that um, are doing their research, they'll see that this little guy, he said his name was Unspeakable Steve. So Steve here, if you didn't know who Steve was like I didn't, I wouldn't just come in and make my own little Unspeakable Steve t-shirt because I have to understand what I'm doing. If I don't understand what I'm doing, I don't do it. Because that's how people get in trouble and they get in trouble real quick. All right, let's see. What we got here taken down and close these out we're almost to the bottom his fight is my fight okay autism ribbon in the back looks like a distressed design here okay his flight is my flight autism awareness and support t-shirt see i just said that no problems it's related to the shirt it's a perfect title your fight is my fight autism t-shirt okay it's not a terrible brand. It's related to the shirt. I don't think that's an issue either. Come down here. Let's read their bullet points. Autism awareness shirt to support a son, brother, or relative with autism. Asperger's syndrome. Okay, that, that doesn't read very well, but I kind of see what they're trying to do. Positive thinking t-shirt for families with autistic children, child with Asperger's. Here, why are they doing a, a comma and then... I don't know. Shirt for parents of special needs children, special education teacher, teachers. So whoever did this, maybe, maybe they don't speak the best English. Um, they sort of get it, but there's definitely room for improvement here. I wouldn't say that this is completely keyword stuffing, but you can clean some of this up, remove some of the commas, get rid of a few of the keywords that aren't needed, just make it related to the t-shirt. See, second bullet point. Give us a gift to someone supporting a boy or man with autism or Asperger's. Great gift for family members or friends who care for an autistic person. We must all do our part to support people with autism. Raising awareness is step number one. Okay, their second bullet point is actually really good. If they could just fix their first one, this would be a really good listing. And as you can see, it's priced at $19.99, it's got three reviews, and it's selling pretty damn well. So this is, aside from the first bullet point, which they need to fix, this is a very, very good listing. How do I get licensing for characters? Uh, reach out to the person who owns that intellectual property and ask them what their licensing agreement is. Maybe they don't even have one. Maybe you'll have to draft a licensing agreement. And then, you know, it's just basically a phone call. Maybe you start off with an email. Phone call works a lot better because you can talk to someone um, and just figure out what they're trying to do. A lot of these, a lot of artists, okay, or YouTubers or anyone who doesn't have a representative they don't even know about half this stuff. They don't even know about Merch by Amazon. So you can go out there. Maybe they do know about Merch by Amazon, but maybe you have an idea of how you can use his characters in a specific way that would resonate with his audience. You can work, as long as he's open to collaboration, you can work with him and say, hey, you know, I will give you 80% of all sales if I can use this character in this way. And here's a contract I put together. Now, anyone on the other end more than likely is not going to say no because they're going to make 80% for doing nothing. And you're going to make 20% for stuff that you didn't even have access to before. So it's not necessarily a bad deal. 
It just depends on who you're working with and how you structure the deal to get it done. Is this going to be a bannable offense or just takedowns? Brett, I have no idea. Um, if you're really, if a lot of your listings have rose gold and glitter and everything like that, I can definitely see those getting banned. Um, not sure about the keyword stuffing. I, you know, we're just going to have to see. I've been called that my whole life. I should be safe. <laughs> uh, using Trump face as a cartoon, is it safety for uploading? Um, so Trump's politician, I, I personally have a few Trump designs up. It's kind of iffy in the political space. You know, a lot of the new politicians that are running for president are actually taking down people's designs. So no slogans, no slogans, um, of, of people who are running for campaigns. So really important. This is from Amazon. No slogans of people who are running from campaigns, no pictures of people that you know politics forever that you didn't take so if you didn't take the picture of this politician okay you can't use it i think it's pretty straightforward but you know you have to remind people so no slogans no official slogans you can make up your own probably no pictures if you're drawing your own cartoon of the president that shouldn't really be an issue i don't see that being an issue okay let's try to make it to the bottom here and then i'm going to sign off because i've been blabbing for for a while now what is this letter kenny look at all this infr it's crazy guys the amount of infringement that goes on but as you can see amazon does take them down these people are probably getting their accounts banned so there's really if you put up you know bannable stuff and you start making a bunch of sales you're never going to see that money so it's not worth it anyways they're just gonna they're going to ban you and then you're going to complain about it and that's going to be the end of that uh let's see yep this shirt's probably gonna come down soon okay don't do that don't do that level 40 smoke cigars introverted but willing to discuss plants okay i am surprised that this shirt is doing so well let's see here autism awareness another one choose kind again I wouldn't do the choose kind, you know, the movie came out, yada, yada, yada. This design, very simplistic. Actually looks a little blurry, but that might just be on my screen. Uh, what about for Mother's Day and birthday? Should we take those out? Um, Wendy, I think it depends on if your shirt is specifically for Mother's Day or birthdays. If, it, if it's related to Mother's Day, then keep it in, by all means. But if you have a, a shirt, a St. Patrick's Day shirt, okay, and you put Mother's Day in the description or bullets or whatever then yeah you should take it out Freddie mercury penis creator yeah that one's gonna that's like a double whammy right there that guy's probably gonna lose his account as well discuss plants is from a meme see and there you go i wouldn't do let's go back where was that right here what meme is this from jason do you know what meme this is from because i i'm not familiar with that Okay, we're gonna keep that open in case uh, Jason responds. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, five customer reviews with a one star rating. Okay, so as you can see, they didn't include a single bullet point. Okay, they priced low, they got five reviews, but <laughs> something went terribly wrong here. They got uh, one star. So we can scroll down, we can see that, hey, when BSR started up here, they never changed their price. It slowly went down, 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 down. So even though they're, they got one star and five reviews, they're still selling pretty well. So one star is not the end of the world. Okay, let's read these reviews. Um, oh, look at that. I wasn't, I wasn't just making it up, guys. The puzzle pieces are all blurry, including the wording. Looks very cheap. Picture's so blurry. I was embarrassed to wear it. The shirt's a decent quality. Print puzzle pieces are blurry. So this really all comes back to the bullet points. If someone comes and they take a look at this shirt, See if I can get the. Why can't I get the the big? There we go. That is that is probably the worst type of customer experience is that they actually print it and send it to the customer and the customer gets a product that is not what they wanted. Someone is trying to take those all down because they applied for a mark. Steve, are you talking about the uh, the plant? 
This one? Discuss plants? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, if you have a P, if you have like a JPG and not a PNG file, okay, the the, the shirt dimensions for a T-shirt on Amazon are pretty big. So if you just take a JPG and you blow it up to size, it's going to just pixelate the hell out of it, and you're gonna get stuff like this. So don't do that. Use vectors if you're going to do that. Use vectors to blow them up. PNGs. Do not take little images and try to blow them up to fit the size. This is what triggered the interest. Let's see here. Introverted but willing to discuss plants. Interesting. I have I've actually not seen that around. Maybe I'm living under a rock. I don't know. Alright, let's keep going. We're almost near the end here. Mommy shark. I wouldn't touch this shark stuff, guys. Again, look at this. American flag vintage baseball flag t-shirt. Dad mom tee. Um, terrible title. Okay, this is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. Sports enthusiasts, comma, fan, comma, players, comma, athlete, comma, competitors, comma, baseball here, like, there's no need for this. This is bad customer experience, and this is keyword stuffing. So don't do that. We, we found one product that is okay. We've not actually found one that's completely decent yet. Just me clicking around in the top 100. Ooh, currently unavailable. Wonder what's up with that. Coffee scrubs, rubber gloves, floss. Like, oh, we've already gone over Lick. He needs to. He needs some help. Vintage 80s style, retro. Okay. So see how it's a retro distressed design, and that's actually kind of what this is. So personally, I think that's probably fine. I think it's going to pass because it's related to the shirt design. But you might be a little bit more cautious and you might want to remove that but i don't really think that this is bad i think that this is a decent title i'm a graphic designer over 40 years new to this just got a new dtg machine you can help me and if you're already buying your own machines and you're new to this good luck good luck that is a big big thing to jump into right away he has an Amazon Choice label. The Amazon Choice labels that you see, I don't know if that's still open, is it? Yeah, these the, these are not something that's just picked by by someone sitting down and like putting an Amazon's Choice label on. It's it's done via an algorithm. So definitely also something to keep in mind. Let's see. Cool sun and cat outline design for lovers, both cats and vintage and rest, retro style apparel. Great fun and funny gift idea, or treat yourself as a cat lover. This isn't bad. They're they're short, okay? They're very, very short. They don't cram a bunch of keywords in there, but they're actually readable. It's related to the design on the shirt. The title is related. Pet Mom and Dad Retro Cat Tees. That actually sounds like a legit brand name. So have we there's not men, women, and youth in the in the bullet points. Have we actually found a oh wow, they like to play around with their price, don't they? Have we actually found a shirt that is a, a decent listing? Ooh, look at that quality. And shirt. Good quality, cute graphic. Favorite shirt, so cute. So there you go. This is, a, again, this just shows that you don't have to make super long bullets to make a good listing. So that is... That is not bad. I, I would say that's that's a decent listing with short bullets. But we found one. We found one. Oh, don't do this. We were talking about song lyrics earlier. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. And look at that. Someone, someone who would put these song lyrics they don't own on a shirt, of, of course they're going to be spamming their bullet points with a bunch of crap. What else do we have? Let's close out some of these. Sloth running team. Man, there are so many sloth running teams. People need to switch it up. How about like a sloth drinking team or sloth tennis team? I don't I, I don't know if any of those exist. Alright. What extension to get that price reaction? Okay, J Bane. This extension is called Merchlytics. Alright, I'm gonna put it in the chat. There you go. 
there you go there it turned into a link but it's going to show you for the shirts that we actually have data on that go back you know so many months how a shirt is doing but guys sloth i know this live isn't about uh exactly finding the unique designs and stuff but the sloth running team is it's getting really overdone here you could do sloth anything team and you'd have a lot less competition Oh look, gold star. I bet this gets removed at some point. Although it is currently unavailable. I think that's from a movie. Might be wrong. Kiss. Jordan 9. One, that's a bad design, I think. Don't just dream it, do it. No bullet points. I don't know if this is supposed to be about Michael Jordan, but... The color on the shirt are faded. It's not the color of the shoe. Okay, so yeah, they're probably talking about Jordan shoes here. Um, this person clearly has no right to that design, no right to the shoes, no right to the name, no right probably to this phrase, if that is a Michael Jordan phrase. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Jay, Jay we, uh, we released that plugin yesterday, I believe. Review this one. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at that one. You linked it. Otaku Japanese subculture obsessed with anime manga t-shirt. Okay, so a Japanese term for subculture that is obsessed with anime and manga. Or manga, or however you say it. So first, um, the title, I would just probably say it. Otaku, if that's how you say it. Japanese subculture anime anime manga t-shirt like you don't need to put obsessed with or subculture that can be put down here in the bullets uh funny anime manga otaku tees that sounds like a brand i don't think that's necessarily too bad uh let's see i don't see any see when i'm clicking this merch former trademark shirt, i'm looking for phrases that may be trademarked i don't see any let's see otaku anime gift t-shirts otaku japanese culture obsessed with okay yeah, this needs some help. So, I I don't I don't know why you're putting gift T-shirts and you're you put otaku otaku anime anime um you know manga manga otaku you just it's the same thing over and over and over again. Like you don't need to do that. It's not going to help you. So what I would do is I'd actually just rewrite these because I'm not really familiar with anime or manga or however you say it. Rewrite these so that these bullet points are related to exactly what's on the t-shirt. Like you could just write this out. You could write what this is in here or maybe just say otaku is a Japanese term for a subculture. Um, this subculture is obsessed with anime and manga. This is a perfect shirt if you are into those things. You know, it's a sentence. Again, I'm not familiar with the niche, so I might sound like an idiot while I'm saying it, but it's a sentence, it's readable, it's understandable. So do that for both of these. I see it's it's selling. It's actually selling pretty well. So if that's your shirt, congrats. Let's see, it shows BSR history. Yeah, so the teal is going to be the price. So these are the price, and this is going to be the BSR. So it basically shows you, is it selling? When's it, when's it selling and people are playing around with price, everything like that. Put up a series of number of shirts, all random numbers got rejected because it had numbers two, three. You had to take baseball as a description. Baseball, hacky, I think you mean hockey. Football is fine, only 23 got flagged. Really? I wonder if someone uh, trademarked their, their jersey number or something. That's interesting. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't really follow baseball that much. Anyways, okay. Ooh, we got a mama bear. Mama bear autism awareness t-shirt. They could just cut this out and that would have been a perfect title right there. Uh, terrible brand. You, know, you don't even overthink the brand. You just call this like strong autism awareness tees. There, that sounds like a brand. It's relevant. It's got keywords in it. Autism shirts, women, autism, oh my god, again. So, I think this is why Amazon is cracking down on this in 30 days. Is because, I mean, we're just going through the top 100 shirts on merch right now, and every single one is basically just trash bullet points. No one is putting forth any effort. So, 
you guys should uh, try doing that a little bit. 80s, bro. This is my 80s, bro, neon. T oh, okay. So here, here, good example. Neon looking colors. When this prints, those colors are going to look so flat that the customer is probably going to be disappointed. So they're going to want to remove neon here. Uh, 80s bro it's it's a fine design it's nothing special but it's selling remove neon let's see this retro 80s costume this is not a costume t-shirt remove that t-shirt makes an awesome gift or present idea for everybody who loves 80s and 90s uh why are they capitalizing every single word that's a little weird michael jordan was number 23 Okay, thank you, Brenda. There you go, Steve. I I didn't even think about that. I did, I did know that. But didn't you say uh, number three, uh, basketball? You did say basketball. Okay, there you go. Now you have your reasoning. Uh, this funny T-shirt also makes an awesome holiday, Christmas, or birthday present for men, women, and boys. Um, guys, I just wouldn't do this. There's no reason to put this stuff. Men, women, and youth is already in there. And then you don't need to list off a bunch of holidays because let's just say you're Christmas shopping. Are you going to type in, um, you know, funny eighties bro t-shirt or are you going to type in Christmas bro t-shirt? You're going to type in the first one because you're buying a gift for someone. You don't care that it's Christmas. Christmas is the event. You have to think like the customer, they're going to be looking for a gift, like a funny gift, an eighties gift, something like that. Okay, we're almost there. All right, here is the hundredth. Busy raising ballers. Okay, I don't necessarily love the design, but it's doing well. Busy raising ballers softball baseball t-shirt. Okay, related to the design. Finally, busy raising ballers t-shirt gift. Okay, this could use some work. All right, let's see if anything's trademarked here quick. Baseball Mom. Baseball Mom is a trademark. Let's see, it's on the supplemental registry. T-shirts is in here. So I'd want to go through, let's see their, their specimen. Baseball Mom limited edition. That actually looks kind of real. I wonder if that was Photoshopped. You see that a lot. If you go into uh, TSDR and you click on documents and you look at their specimens, a lot of times they look completely photoshopped. It's ridiculous. Let's see. Spin live, baseball mom. Yeah, so I just, that guys, that's what I'm looking for. Now, I haven't looked into it a lot, but if I see a phrase like this, that's what I'm looking for when I click the Merchant Former Trademark Check, is to see if these phrases might throw something. So, that aside, okay, now this says busy raising ballers. She could just take baseball mom right out of here, or I'm saying she. It could be anyone, he, she, whatever, um, and they wouldn't have a problem. But if, you, if your designs get rejected, it's most likely something you put in your bullet points. Let's see here. Baseball shirts men, baseball clothing, baseball shirts women, women's... Okay, I think you guys get the point. Pretty, 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 pretty bad. <laughs> So I think a lot of people have a lot of work to do. Um, don't be lazy. Just go and actually do the work. And from now on, if you're someone who does have to go back in and change things, think of the customer first. It's all about the customer experience. And think about what's going to happen when your product gets shipped to them and if they're going to be happy with it. That's how you should write your bullet points. All right, let's see what the comments said. I took... I took basketball out, it went through. Nice. Uh, what the, uh, should we use all variations of t-shirt and the keywords? There's enough with shirt or t-shirt. There's really no reason to use all the variations. I mean, I might use a variation when it makes sense. Um, but again, Amazon, almost a trillion dollar company, they do understand the difference between, say, a t-shirt or someone typing in shirt. They know that that's different than someone looking for a hooded sweatshirt or a hoodie. Is the word gift going to be okay to use? I don't see it being an issue, but again, I am i don't work for Amazon, but I have gift in a lot of my listings, so I'm not going to touch it, and I'm not going to worry about it. 
All right, guys. I think that about wraps it up. It's been quite a while of me talking. Uh, if you guys have any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and I'll swing back by in a bit to answer them. But appreciate you all being on the live, um, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.